What's up, everybody? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Y'all, I'm gonna give uh y'all some time to get in. I just popped up. Y'all know me, y'all. I just pop up. I pop up on live like a surprise. Like a pop up, like a pregnancy scare. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, how's everybody doing today? Love, love, love. It's a rainy day here in Atlanta. What's up, Angelina? What's up, Earl? Annalie, cute raccoon, Summer, Betsy, Linda, Terry, Mary. Y'all, I love y'all. Hey, listen, we're going to do, I want to do a live spirit box session today. And I just want to ask y'all's questions. So I said I was going to drop a video a day, a video a day. So that's where there's a graveyard shift, whether it's a ghost that are roasted, whether it's an investigative video, whether it's a live. We dropping something every day. Debbie, thank you. I'm glad you're here. What's up from everybody in Illinois? Yeah, so get your questions ready, y'all. What's up, Sweden? Y'all, look at these clouds. It's raining out here in Atlanta, y'all. I got I caught a break in the weather, so I thought I would come out here. We came to this cemetery. Well, we always come to this resting community, but we came here before in the rain, and it seemed to be pretty active. So I was wondering, you know, why not come back here? Why not ask some of y'all's questions? And why not do it on a rainy day? <laughs> I'm just waiting for a few more people to get in. A few more people to come in. Gotcha, uh, gotcha, gotcha, y'all, y'all, y'all. Come on in, come on in. All right, y'all. We got Omaha, Nebraska, Ohio, Buffy. I love Ohio. Bronx, what's up, Bronx? Word to your mother, kid. Word to your mother, kid. Williamsburg, Virginia. Wisconsin. All right, y'all. Dang, dang mama. Thank you. I appreciate you, love. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, y'all, we're going to get to it. What questions do we have? What are we starting off with today? I need a good one. I need a good question, y'all. What y'all want to know? What y'all want to know? Uh oh, here we go. The person has been created in very connected. Okay, that's a really good question. We haven't really dealt with that. I've been getting a lot of questions about cremation and how that pertains to the afterlife. S Spider Queen, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, how does cremation play effect in the afterlife? Can you still communicate with someone who's been cremated? Uh, are they able to communicate? Are you able to be visited by them? Mark, appreciate you. Mark, appreciate it. Yeah. All right, let's ask y'all. We're asking about cremation. All the spirits that are here resting, y'all know me. This is like our second home. <laughs> we come here all the time. So it's been probably about a week since I've been here. I've been out of town, but we're back. And me and my friends, we have some questions for you. And like always, we would just love if you would come and indulge us. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Howe family. Y'all, this the Howe family. We always with the Howe family. Dolores, appreciate it, love. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Y'all, say, man. And whoever sent me the uh, the bug spray <laughs> uh, bracelets, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. So, the question is about cremation. Can someone who's cremated still get in contact with you? Hold on, y'all, my bad. Cut the speaker off. Yes. If someone is cremated, can they still contact the living? Yeah. 
Okay. Are you able to communicate with someone who's been cremated? Y'all gotta help me, y'all, because I'm kind of by the traffic right here. So, like, it's hard for me to hear. <laughs> so, y'all gotta listen intently as well. Hey, y'all gotta clock in today. Can you tell me anything about cremation? Does everything in the same when someone is cremated? Some. Do you become whole on the other side once you're cremated? Is it too much? <laughs> Carolyn, thank you. Y'all. We've never really talked about cremation. We've maybe brought it up once, but it seemed like that question, it's like one of those questions that they don't want to acknowledge. Maybe we're not privileged. I don't know. Cause I didn't really feel like I got a solid, solid response from the cremation question. And I don't want to keep like beating them in the head with it. We can go back and listen after uh, I record this, because this is live. I need to go back and listen. If I go back and listen with headphones, we might have got some responses. So, y'all, I know the words aren't popping up on the screen. That's because we're live. <laughs> we're live. I'm not here to edit it. So, yeah. So, we just have to put it together in real time, y'all. So, I don't know what we got from that. It seemed like we didn't get any, like, definitive answers. Right? We on the same page with that? Umberto, what's up from Tijuana? Okay, can your pets see you if they go to your funeral? Wow, okay. I was about to give you the side eye, Umberto, for that question, but then I thought about it. You're right, because like babies and animals supposedly can see spirits, right? So if your pet comes to your funeral, could they potentially be interacting with your spirit? Great question. Everyone that's donating, thank you, thank you, thank you. It was coming in fast. Susan, uh, Susanna, Jenna. Man, y'all, thank y'all. I love y'all. I love y'all. But that's a really good, great question. If your, if your dog comes to your funeral, would they be able to see or sense your spirit? I might. Okay. Can someone who's passed away still interact with their pet that is still living? That is sad. That is sad. Once you pass away, can you still interact with your living pet? Is that why somebody said no? That's why somebody said so. Not really. Not really. Okay, so it sounds like you got a yeah and a not really. Which I feel like kind of makes sense. Because rarely you do see instances where 
an animal seemingly is responding to uh, a certain, you know, people think it's a spirit, but it doesn't happen all the time. It's not like, because think about it, somebody passes away literally every single day that probably has a pet or animal. And if that's the case, they would always be interacting with their pet or animal. So maybe it's not a situation where they can see their owner. Unless it's just a situation where the, I don't know y'all, what y'all think? <laughs> I'm trying to, hey, I'm trying to think it out, out loud. <laughs> I'm trying to think it out, out loud. I don't know. That's a really great question. Once you pass away can you come back continuously and spend time with your living pet and would your pet your pet be aware of your presence how long do we stay here after we pass buffy wants to know how long do we stay earthbound after we pass away don't worry about said don't worry about are you able to tell us how long are you earthbound after you transition? Once you pass away, do you go immediately to your judgment? Are you awaiting judgment? Is there a reason why Walter and Mary Ellen showed up? Mary Ellen, are you still here? You know, anytime Mary Ellen and them pop up, usually somebody needs help. So Walter popped up and then Mary Ellen. So I'm curious what's going on. Let's see. What other questions do we have? Can you see your pets in heaven? How much control do the spirits have of what or who they see here? Or what they are? Okay. All right. The question is, how much control do the spirits have over what they do in the afterlife? Can they come and go as they please? Can they visit who they want to visit? Can they see who they want to see? How much freedom do you have once you transition? So they said, shut up. Oh, someone said they're sad. Why are you sad? Are you okay? I need these cars to really. Like, let me get away from this traffic. You? Somebody said stop. Mary Ellen, are you still here? Always. Always. I know y'all heard that. 
Well, that's good to know, Mary Ellen, that you're always here. Thank you. Very pretty. Mary Ellen, it seems like someone here needs help. It sounds like they're talking back and forth. Mary Ellen, are you helping someone? It's always interesting when Mary Ellen comes around and then like you hear the conversation start happening between the people. And she and it's always a reference to either like a door or upstairs. It's interesting, y'all. I don't know. I don't know. But I find it very, very like peaceful. Like sitting up on this hill, the wind's blowing. It's a cool breeze. Like you know that there are other people here, even if you can't see them. But it's like everybody's just chilling. Said, are you affected by the Earth's weather in the afterworld? That's a good question. So if it's raining like it was raining today, is it raining wherever you are? Feel it. Feel it. So if it rains here, does it rain in the afterlife? Like if you're Okay, that's weird. Like if you're present in the space that it's raining in, is it raining in that space in the afterlife? If that makes sense. Are you able to experience the weather of the living? Oh, say all something? No. Is it always the same weather where you are? Something I'm Watch it. I'm going to move to another part of the cemetery, y'all. Al family, I appreciate y'all's time. I'm going to move around. Let's just see. Let's see if the conversation shift when we move. Y'all got time today? Y'all got time to hang out with me for a little bit? Thank you. I appreciate all of y'all for tuning in. Come on, y'all. Let's see where else we can go. Let's go over here real quick. Y'all, listen. I'm really, really happy 
So we're planning our Ghost Brothers weekend in Savannah. I told y'all, it's like October 27th, 28th, whatever that Friday, Saturday is before Halloween. We're doing investigations, we're doing tours, we're doing meet and greets. It's a lot going on that weekend. So I'm gonna tell y'all more about it, but the tickets go on sale this week. It's a Ghost Brothers weekend. So me, Jawan, Marcus, everybody will be there. But in doing so, I met this gentleman who has access to a lot, a lot, a lot of locations, like theaters, uh, haunted restaurants, jails. He has access to all these different places. And he said it would be an honor. He watches the graveyard shift. He said it would be an honor for us to come in and kick it at some of his spots. So yeah, man, y'all, we got to get up out the graveyard for a little bit and we're gonna go check out a whole bunch more types of locations and do some more investigating. So I think that that's really cool, man. All right, y'all. Let's try. Let's see what the conversation is like over here. I think that's a nice view, right? What y'all think? Let's see. All right, y'all. Yeah, so it's that Friday and Saturday, the 27th and the 28th in Savannah, Georgia. All right, let's get to it. What questions do we have, y'all? Okay. Y'all need more merch. I got you. Remember, the merch drops every quarter. So the next drop is in September. Next drop is in September. And then November, December, that's our one year anniversary t-shirt. Everybody got to get the anniversary tee, y'all. Everybody got to get the anniversary tee. All right, here we go. What questions do we have? If a spirit did you wrong in life, will they make up for it when they pass? Hmm. You're right. But I feel like that's kind of like judgment, right? But then it gets tricky because it's like, what do you feel like was done wrong to you? Unless it was like a unanimous decision, like, yes, that's wrong. But like, you know, sometimes people feel wronged and may not have actually been wrong. I was talking to a friend the other day. I was talking to a friend the other day. And uh, yeah, he was just telling me that he really wanted something, but he wanted it so he could essentially rub it in the face of someone who doubted him, right? And I was just like, you can't hold that. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't hold, that can't be your, it could be maybe a part of your driving force, but it can't, it can't be that. Because now what if that person's not even thinking about you, bro? You know what I'm saying? Like, don't waste your time putting all this energy into somebody who may or may not even be thinking about you. So you're holding this animosity against someone that you feel like wronged you. And what it, they might not even be thinking about it. And it's just like you're holding on to something. So we got to just let stuff go. Now, I get it. Some things you can't let go. Like, I get it. Now, once we start crossing that line, and I think we all know, maybe know what that line is, <laughs> like ab abuse, all that type of stuff. I get it, but other stuff, you feel me? All right, that's a good question though. Let's see, this question is about judgment. Everybody over here, I'm Dalen. If you didn't hear before, I come in love, peace, and respect. I'm just here to ask a few questions, and I would love for you to respond if you can. This question is, will people be judged in the afterlife for the wrongs that they caused you while living? Life. Oh, 
So if someone wrongs you in life, will they receive punishment in the afterlife? I said very. Again, I would think so. You know, I think that's all about your judgment. If you did wrong, doing wrong, I think you will, you know what I'm saying? All of that will be shown in your in your replay. <laughs> so I think so. I don't know. In there, some people ask. Uh oh, I guess somebody getting mad because I can't see their questions. Y'all, there's a lot of questions coming in. So if I don't see your question, please. <laughs> I am not a superhero. Uh, what did it say? You have to understand that. I don't. Chelsea, <laughs> people are, I guess, coming at you, Chelsea. I don't know what you asked, but I'm looking. So if you want to ask your question now, I'm uh, totally looking for it. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh-oh. Here's a good question. If you had several miscarriages, are you are those babies there when you pass? Okay. Okay, that's a good question. This question is about miscarriages. Which I feel like is uh, um, definitely, definitely a sensitive topic that a lot of people have dealt with. Um, and that's definitely a topic that uh, Stacy and I can for sure uh, sympathize with. Um, so yeah, that's an interesting question. Miscarriages. When you pass away, with the, the, the children that didn't make it, will they be there waiting for you? Let me see. Did you know? So when it comes to babies that don't make it full term, will, you, will their parents be able to meet them in the afterlife? So will all the all the lost babies be awaiting their parents in the afterlife? Of course. So he said, ask me. So just for clarity, all the little babies that didn't make it full term would they be able to meet their parents in the afterlife yeah <laughs> say got in yeah that's cool that's cool they said yeah that's cool that's really really cool you would hope so you would hope so that's cool all right let's see what questions did i miss since I'm getting cussed out in the chart, in the chat. Let me see. Let me try to read some, y'all. Give me a second. Give me a second. Y'all? <laughs> What's up, Yolanda? Y Yolanda Butts? It's okay, that Chelsea, I hear raising hell. She gifted you for the wrong reason. She doesn't know. You don't give me. Oh, Chelsea sent a gift that I didn't see. See, Chelsea, I apologize. Forgive me for missing your gift. But like, you gotta realize it's coming so fast, y'all. So Chelsea, thank you. <laughs> thank you. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. I don't ever want you to feel like, anyone to feel like they gave me something I did not acknowledge them. God forgive me. 
All right, man, here we go. Somebody else is, say, man, y'all be getting a little aggressive. Y'all are getting aggressive, and I love it. I love it, but please understand, y'all. Like Patty, Patty talking about something, what the hell, answer me. <laughs> y'all, it's a lot going on. I'm just one man. I'm just one man. I love y'all, I love y'all. Patty, listen to me. You might have to post it a thousand times, Patty. <laughs> like, I don't know what you want me to do. <laughs> like, I don't know what you want me to do, Patty. I'm not. <laughs> you know what, Patty? You have an attitude. So, no, I will not be answering you. You see how we have that interaction in front of all these people? It's 730 people in here, Patty. Now, me and you are having a conversation. And now, no, I cannot answer your question, Patty, because you're being mean to me. And that's not nice. We have to be nice to fellow shift members. Love, love, love. Next question. What are we talking about? Appreciate it, Bob. Let's see. Come on, what's the next? <laughs> Do married couples live together in the afterlife? Good question. Do married couples live together in the afterlife? But what if it's your second marriage? What if your first person passes away and then you get married again? Like, who do you live with in the afterlife? Let's see. When children pass away, do they continue to grow on the other side? So yes they do. Yes they do. Great question. Okay, here's the one about reincarnation. Is reincarnation a thing? Okay. Here's a the question was apparently that I missed was the people that have a near death experience. What is the white light that they see? Is there a white light? I hope that that's the question that I missed. No one wants anyone to feel neglected in the chat, guys. At all. So hopefully that's the question. I hopefully I got it right. When people have a near death experience, what is the white light that they see? You're right, Tina. I have asked, but it's okay. We're gonna go we'll try to go a little bit deeper. So, what is the white light? that people claim to see. You said it's him? Who was the him you're referring to? That's interesting. What it, they said, I asked, what is the white light that you see? And they said, it's him. What if it, what does that mean? What, what, like, what if it is like the presence of God? It's like so bright. I don't know. Like God's light, right? Right? 
I think I think so. I think that's kind of deep. And that's how I be knowing like it ain't me. Cause I wouldn't have never thought that. that. Like when you think of the white light, you always think of it like a, a tunnel or like a portal, like like a yellow brick road. You know what I mean? But it's more so like, what if it is like the light and presence of God greeting you? That's the white light that you're that you uh, that you're seeing. I think that that's a really great question. I hope that that got some sort of answers resolved. But y'all, literally y'all, no fighting in the comment section. <laughs> y'all got me feeling like a little school teacher. No fighting in the comment section, kids. Let's be nice. Keep our hands and feet to ourselves. We gotta be nice, y'all. We gotta be nice to everybody, including me, cause I'm sensitive. Y'all, if y'all haven't realized by now, I'm very sensitive. I try to be tough, <laughs> but I'm sensitive about my art. And that's my problem. Look, I remember I started, I started a business right after college. This is before, this is, all right, this is me talking to y'all, y'all. This is gonna have a little chat time with Dalen for a second, y'all. So just give me a little bit. When I first got out of college, I started a business. This is before Uber Eats. This is before DoorDash. This is before Grubhub, but it was called Food Chariot. And we were an online food delivery service. Like this is before anybody was delivering food for restaurants. Like it was so taboo. Like people didn't even want to like utilize the service. But I joined the Chamber of Commerce uh, in the city. And I remember meeting this guy there and he owned this franchise of chicken restaurants in Texas called Williams Chicken. His name is like Hezekiah Williams. He has like 300 like chain chicken restaurants that he owns. Multi, 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 multi-millionaire. And I remember I had gotten my first bad review. The way that the business was set up was that we only delivered to certain zip codes because outside of those zip codes, it, it didn't make sense financially to deliver there because of gas, mileage, all of that stuff. So this lady did not understand at one point, Alma, thank you, love, thank you. This lady did not understand that we could not deliver to her house but we could deliver to the house in front of her. And I was like, it's two totally different zip codes. I get it, but if we deliver to you, we have to deliver to your whole zip code. So she just was pissed. And I felt so bad that this one customer was pissed off at me. So I remember going to this Chamber of Commerce meeting, meeting Mr. Hezekiah Williams. And I was just like, man, Mr. Williams, like how do you have own and operate three, 400, like franchises i was like this lady really just made me feel bad about not being able to like provide her a service and he was like dalen don't you ever lose that feeling he said you should always feel that way about everything that you do everything that you put your name on everything that you stamp he was like i got 300 some locations if i hear a bad review about store 253 in wilmer texas I'm gonna be just as frustrated, just as angry, just as heartbroken as if it was the very first review of my very first location. So I say that to say, I've just always been passionate about the things that I do. So even when I put out videos, if I get one negative comment, I'm like, damn, like what did I do that that person did not like? What did I do wrong? What could I have done differently? I think it's like the artist in me. So yeah, I say all that to say, man, I'm an artist and I'm a sensitive about my stuff. So sometimes I do get defensive. Sometimes I do get uh, quick tongued in the comments. But again, it's just because I'm an artist, y'all, and I'm sensitive and I enjoy what I do. So when someone doesn't enjoy something that I love, it makes me feel bad sometimes. So this is me being transparent, love, 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 love. Next point of conversation. Somebody says, can I bring Marcus out here? Look, y'all. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. But let's just be transparent at the moment, y'all. Everybody got their life going on, man. I can't make nobody <laughs> come out and do nothing <laughs> when they got other stuff going. <laughs> like people, you know what I'm saying? Hey, man, listen, 
people got bills to pay <laughs> ain't nobody on tv right now all of the shows are on hold so everybody got to go back to what they hustle is whatever that is so you know what i mean they'll come around when they get time like we're together we just left an event this past weekend in new york we got an event this coming weekend in uh at ashmore so yeah we then we're gonna be in michigan paracon like week after next then we got dragon con in atlanta so we're always together working y'all we're just waiting for our next opportunity to be back on television and until then this is like my baby this is my baby like i feel like this is me in the gym keeping my reps up keeping shooting keep shooting keep shooting shots in the off season i enjoy this i found something that uh i can control i have a hundred percent control over that's refreshing and relaxing and it allows me to uh grow my abilities at my pace you know what i'm saying like i love being around juan and marcus they're my best friends like we be together when we it ain't got nothing. The majority of, of us being together has nothing to do with paranormal. <laughs> Absolutely nothing to do with paranormal. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, hey, y'all still going at it in the comments? Chill, chill. But I say all that to say, this is just my journey, y'all. This is my journey, and I appreciate y'all tuning in to my journey. I don't want to sound selfish, and I don't want y'all to feel like I'm being selfish. And like, I'm not trying to kick it with Juwan and Marcus. Because I do. I would love to. But again, there's some freedom to being able to, like, express my journey and go down my journey. And just see where that leads me. I don't know. What if I am a superhero, guys? <laughs> what if I am a superhero? <laughs> what if I am Batman? <laughs> and it takes me to go on my solo graveyard journey before I find out that I am, in fact, Batman. Y'all, I love y'all, man. Thank y'all for listening. But yeah, Marcus is the man. Marcus is the man. We was, like I said, we was just together literally day before yesterday. But it's just trying to catch. Look, y'all, Marcus is literally, oh, let me explain to y'all this. And I caught myself saying literally. I'm going to stop saying that. Let me explain something to y'all about Marcus and Juwan. In the world of barbering, and this is real life. In the world of barbering, Marcus is, is I was about to say the L word. He is the Michael Jordan. He is the Michael Jackson. He is the Tom Brady. <laughs> he is the Beyonce in that world like seriously seriously i didn't believe it <laughs> marcus proved it to me one day we was in los angeles for something and he was like dalen watch this i said like, watch what we was walking down the street in los angeles randomly and there was a random barber shop and marcus was like follow me in here <laughs> i said marcus man don't go in here and get embarrassed man y'all Marcus walked into this barbershop. I'm exaggerating, but I'm not exaggerating. Marcus walked into this barbershop and stood at the front door. Like, you know how like wrestlers at the WWF, <laughs> they come out on stage <laughs> when their music is playing, they just stand there. <laughs> Marcus stood at the front door of this barbershop and in about, probably about five seconds, y'all, three people ran up to Marcus that were like barbers and stylists and was like, oh my God, the Marcus Harvey, da 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 da. I was like, wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. But yeah, so Marcus is the man, y'all. He cuts Nas's hair. He's on tour with Nas, Grant Hill, with the NBA. Marcus does all of that. Juwan, on the other hand, Juwan runs our clothing line, Loren Spratt. So he's dealing with clients all day long suits tailoring and Ju never mind juan's working on some stuff you know juan got a restaurant in miami like everybody is just kind of like in this off season trying to build their respective personal brands in life but we're always together love 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 all right y'all 
what else we talking about? Oh, the dogs. <sighs> Y'all, they're at home. <laughs> they're at home driving Axel up the wall, man. Because now she's finally that size and that age where, like, she can run and play with them. Yeah. So they irritate her and she irritates them. It's the funniest thing ever. What else we talking about, y'all? Yeah, y'all. I ain't going to be able to answer all the questions. I apologize. I'm going to have to get some moderators. I don't know how that works. I ain't never had, like, a, a YouTube moderators. I got to find a couple people that do some moderation. I need some moderation going on, man. Sonya, the cruise was cool, y'all. I ain't gonna lie, we was a little disappointed, though. The overall boat was dope, but it was just the pool on the cruise ship was like a big bathtub. It wasn't no swimming pool. It was like a sit-down-in-it pool. And then, like, it's an adult cruise, so it's a whole bunch of drinking adults. And I wasn't seeing people getting in and out the pool too often. So you know what that mean. People... People, not people, pee pool. Pee in the pool. I know them people was peeing in that pool, man. I ain't getting the water. Stacy didn't either, man. And she was just like, that's the only downfall to this cruise. The cruise would have been dope if, if they would have invested more into like their pool. Because you're on a boat at sea. <laughs> you can't get in the seawater. <laughs> you want to be able to get in the regular water, not the pee pool. It was too many people in the pee pool. But other than that, the food was good. Everything was great, man. Like, we had a great time. We had a really, really great time. The entertainment was good. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Tina, you want to be a moderator, Tina? I need you to send me an email. People were bullying. What did they say? they say uh, people were bullying patty y'all please no bullying y'all it's not cool y'all we gotta be we gotta show love and respect to everybody we gotta treat everybody with respect that's the one thing that's the one rule we gotta have in this family is we gotta treat everybody with respect and if you just have to be disrespectful to somebody be disrespectful to me and not to anybody in the comment sections y'all i can take it but don't be disrespectful to anybody in the comment section. Even if they're being mean to me, we ain't gotta be mean to them. It's okay, guys. That's why I'm your fearless shift leader because I come equipped emotionally and physically. <laughs> uh, Y'all wanna see more uh, haunted schools? <laughs> Say, I got y'all. Look, this Saturday, the video I'm dropping this Saturday, I went to a cemetery at night and it got pretty intense. It's the first night shift, guys. So be on the lookout Saturday, 7 p.m. Eastern. We drop him the first night shift. First night shift. It's crazy. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do more videos outside the cemetery. I'm gonna keep the cemetery going, but I'm gonna do way more videos outside the cemetery. This channel's growing. It's growing, y'all, and we have to take it there. Can't keep doing the same stuff. We're gonna keep doing the graveyard shifts every day, but on top of that, we're going to be adding more and more content. Any more questions while we're here? Uh, you need my email. My email, if you're on a computer, if you go to the about section on my YouTube page, it has my email. But if not, you can just send me an email to Dalen228 at Yahoo. D-A-L-E-N 228 at Yahoo, y'all. Yep, 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 yep. Y'all, what else are we talking about? Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Do you, do you see the pictures? Nah, fly. You know what? This bank is only available in the professional uh -oh. version. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Patty, I see your question. Patty, you know what? You you are me. This is this shift is about me and you, Patty. We're gonna answer that. So Patty, you have a question about do abusers get judged in the afterlife? Again, I don't know. 
anything that goes on past the doings of Dalen. But I would think someone who is an abuser would definitely get their judgment in the afterlife. Now, last year, and this is me talking to you, Patty, again, last year at the Ghost Brothers weekend, we had a gallery reading and we had uh, a gentleman by the name of Reggie, Reginald. Reginald, you may have seen him a few times with the Ghost Brothers, but he's a psychic and medium. And he was doing a reading. There was this lady, there was this older lady, seasoned lady in the front row. And they, she was with her family. They had just brought her. She didn't want to be there. She didn't like, didn't believe any of this stuff. Like she was just there because her family made her be there. And she sat on the front row, you know, literally like, ah, stop saying the L word, Dalen, stop saying literally. She was sitting there, arms crossed, just, y'all just gonna come park right next to me. Right next to me. Right next to me, y'all. Right next to me, y'all. Hold on, let's see. Let's just see what the count is. Let's just see real quick, y'all. Uh, all right. As so long as they keep it cool, we gonna keep it. As long as they keep it cash, we gonna keep it cash. <laughs> you know, people just gotta, you know, they pull up next to you, just park next to you. You gotta always keep your head on the swivel. Especially out here in Atlanta, man. We on the west side. <laughs> We are on the west side. But look, Patty, as I was saying, the lady was sitting in the front row, did not want to be at the gallery reading, arms crossed, mad face, all of that. And um, Reggie, I guess, was drawn to her. And I want to say, I don't remember the just of what happened, but long story short, it was the same type of situation. It was about the forgiveness of an abuser. And her story was her and her sister were abused by uh, a family member their whole, like from childhood through teenage years. And she says so much to the fact that uh, she would sleep with a knife under her pillow to protect her and her sister. That's what it was. That's what it was. Her issue was, y'all, it's coming back to me, y'all. I, I ain't thought about this since it happened, but yeah, okay. So, Reggie was talking to the lady, and he said that there's a woman on the other side that's coming through, and I think he said the name, and the name just so happened to be her sister. And she was like, she's there, I see her, she's with a gentleman, or she's with a man. So the lady gets like, flustered red like she started to breathe like what's wrong what's wrong and she was like i hope that's not what i think it is and reggie was just like you know i, I see i see a, a woman here's her name apparently it's her sister's name and she's with the man so apparently when they were children their father used to abuse them so the sis her she would carry a knife under her bed every night to try to protect herself even she said even to this day this lady's like 90, carries a knife in her bed to protect herself. She said her greatest fear is for her sister who has passed away to be in the afterlife with her abuser. So for her to, to, for her to come through and to say that she's with the man, she's just like her greatest fear is that her sister is on the other side with her abuser. Yeah, yeah. So she went through this whole emotional like roller coaster because she's just like to her, that was her greatest, greatest, greatest fear. But like Reggie was saying, like, like there is, there is that judgment. That's what judgment's for. Like that's, that's what it's for over there. And whoever that person is, they're going to get their judgment. So you just gotta trust and believe that judgment comes even if you don't see it. Even if you don't see it, it comes and it can potentially you can't tell somebody how to grieve y'all listen i am not a counselor 
I am not a, a therapist. I am not a psychiatrist. I'm just a dude that's been through some stuff. And everybody's been through some stuff. You know what I'm saying? So you can't tell nobody how to grieve, nobody how to handle their stuff, because everybody's different. But I would just like to urge you to just let to let the higher being do what do what he or she does because you can't do nothing you know what i'm saying like you drive yourself crazy like my, like i was telling you the story earlier man my homeboy you're gonna drive yourself crazy trying to be successful to prove yourself to somebody else like let that you know what i'm saying let god handle that let God handle that. You keep doing you. You keep getting better, Patty. You grow, pray. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with seeking, uh, 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 you know, therapy. Nothing wrong with therapy, y'all. Nothing wrong with talking to somebody. Nothing wrong with any of that. Now, don't let nobody make you feel bad if you feel like you need to talk to somebody. Like, don't. Holding on to that anger and all that stuff, term, all that turns into negativity and turns into disease and sickness. So, I'm, again, you can't tell nobody. You can't tell nobody how to grieve and how to handle their trauma. By no means, and no means will I ever do that. But please know, I, gear, I promise you, there's somebody else in this comment section that unfortunately probably went through going through the same so you're not alone but yeah that's just something you gotta just yeah because you can't do nothing about it man you, you gotta just you just gotta know that people gonna get theirs <laughs> it always happens people gonna get theirs i even think that like people that have done horrible horrible things in life that even do change their life at some point I still feel like they get theirs, whatever that looks like. So yeah, I say all that to say, Patty, I hope that helped. I hope that, you know what I'm saying, we was able to address, address. I hope everything's better. Love, Patty, love, love, love. All right, y'all, what else we talking about? You said, can I tell your buddy Dante Freeman? It, it went fast. Y'all, okay, look, let's address that too. I have been getting a lot of emails where people are like, Daylin, can I please bring you to my family cemetery so you can help me contact my my grandmother, my father, my, my so-and-so, my friend, da-da-da. Y'all, I don't know what y'all think I do. <laughs> Know what y'all think I do, man? I don't know, cause I, y'all, I tell y'all all the time, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I am just out here asking questions. I'm just trying to figure it out, y'all. I'm just trying. To, oh, my man got here with his shirt off. Okay, I'm just trying to figure it out myself. That's it. Just ask questions. Figure it out. How you doing? How are you? Good, good, good. But yeah. Let me see. We got music and music schedule. Sorry, I got this feel like I'm saying. Calandra, all right, man. Be safe. Be safe. Be safe. All right. As I was saying, I don't know what I'm doing, y'all. <laughs> Y'all, we stumbled into this graveyard shift thing, y'all. I promise you, it literally started because I didn't have any money to rent locations. Like, they be trying to charge $2,000, $5,000, $7,000, $10,000. I'm not going to pay you that to come to your location. Where can I go for free? Graveyards, because they everywhere. Bada bing, bada boom. But who would have thought that this would have turned into, like, this large of a family that loves these conversations, y'all? So, yeah, I'm just someone that stumbled into this. We've only been doing it for, what's it, nine, ten months, y'all? It ain't even been a year yet. So I say all that to say, I don't know who we're always contacting. I don't want you to feel like if you bring me to your grandmama's grave and we come out here, that we're going to be talking to 
to Nana. Because it very well might be Bubba. <laughs> or it could be Terry. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. And I don't want to get out here and then you get misled and all that type stuff. And the next thing you know, I'm on 60 Minutes getting sued. <laughs> Graveyard shift Ponzi scheme. They got my picture. <laughs> all on 60 Minutes. <laughs> Yeah, he made everyone feel comfortable. <laughs> he was such a sweet guy. <laughs> hey, man. No, I'm just playing, y'all. But, hey, look, say, if y'all want me to come back to y'all house, hey, say, I'll come. I'll do it. <laughs> you just got to let me be able to record it, and you got to sign my waiver that lets you know that, again, I do not know what I'm doing. <laughs> But we can just see. I'm always down to see. Especially after y'all saw my grandmama video. Y'all was like, okay, maybe he might be on to something. Which I still think about that. My mom called me the other day. And she was like talking about that. Like it kind of freaked her out a little bit. This is her mom. So I don't know, man. Hey, man, say. Hey. 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 <laughs> y'all want me to come out there, man? <laughs> Everything's a conversation. <laughs> Everything's a conversation. But we have to videotape it. We have to record it. Uh, okay, look. Well, tell me what y'all think about this. I'm thinking about getting some remote shifters. Some remote shifters, y'all. Would y'all like to see other people doing graveyard shifts on this channel from time to time? Like, what if we find a couple people that live like all over the world or all, all over the country and we tap into their ships every once in a while. Would y'all enjoy that? What y'all think? Did you say no? <laughs> Somebody said no. <laughs> well, Erica, fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, I feel like it's cool. We might find somebody who else. We might find somebody who's good that y'all might want to see from time to time. Like what if we find a woman you feel me? <laughs> what if we find a cool teenager? You know what I'm saying? I don't know. That might be kind of weird. <laughs> that might be kind of weird. 18 and older, guys. <laughs> 18 and older. But yeah, man, we might just find different people with different approaches and different styles that we can just tap in. I think it'll be cool. Every once in a while, maybe we'll drop a 10-minute video, a 15-minute graveyard ship of someone that maybe lives in Arizona and that's doing a spirit box session in Tombstone, Arizona. That would be kind of cool, right? Yeah, I'm going to work on it. I'm going to work on it. Be looking for the call to action, y'all. So if you, if you, you know, we're going to try. We're going to at least try. Everybody that donated, thank y'all so much, y'all. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Hold on, let me see if I can. Let me see, let me see. Didi. Oh, what did I see at the school, Didi? So yeah. Didi, I appreciate that. Thank you, y'all, for everybody that's donating. I appreciate you. If I missed your donation, I I'm telling you now. Thank you. I appreciate you. Uh, no, nah, man, say. Okay. Okay. I didn't realize. So at the end of the video, the two, vi like the, the two suggested videos pop up. And I think it popped up over the screen and people missed. Dude. So the first door shut. So Mark is coming with the camera. He gets close to the door. And the door starts to shut. I'm like, did Mark kick the door? Mm, maybe. I don't know. But the door by me down the hallway closed. <laughs> That's what made me run. Y'all. So I've been in situations like that before. But it's been a minute because it only usually happens like, well, I only do stuff like that around Ghost Brothers. Uh. Oh, 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 Christina, thank you, Christina, Christina, thank y'all, thank y'all, but nah, so, yeah, the door closed, but here's my thing, I was like, I can see how Mark could have maybe made the first door close, because maybe he kicked it, but I would have felt like I would have heard him kick it or push it, whatever, but that second door, that second door down the hall by me closing, there was nobody down there, so I don't know. 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 
Did y'all see the second door or did the little thing pop up? Yeah. Yeah. Mark is always here. Mark is behind the scenes. That's him on the camera. That was him talking in the background. But we were trying to do like a user follow through experience. Y'all, we just trying stuff at this point on the channel. That's it. That's it. But the video that we're airing Saturday is a cemetery investigation, y'all. At night. It's crazy. It gets pretty intense. It gets pretty intense. Like, I'll tell you something about it, man. Like, we shot it literally a couple weeks ago. So, like, in July. Dead summer. In the south. 100 some degrees outside. Hot. And literally... Ah, stop stop saying that daily immediately it gets freezing cold in the middle of the cemetery just in this one spot like you can see my breath it's summertime i go like this and it's like 30 degrees outside like it's crazy so we're dropping that video on saturday so be on the lookout be on the lookout Y'all, I did not mean to be out here for no hour. What time is it? It is 7.30. Are you 25, 35? <laughs> I am 38 years old, y'all. 38. March the 18th, 1985. Knocking on 40. Knocking on 40. Knocking on 40. I think people come here and they sit at this hill and they look over into the city because you can kind of see back there the skyline so it's a really nice view but yeah y'all what we'll we talking about I appreciate y'all thank y'all check out Springfield Illinois Oak Ridge Cemetery okay okay but yeah y'all I appreciate y'all's time again thank you thank you for your time thank you for your questions I got more videos releasing I'm gonna probably drop ghosted or ghosted or roasted tomorrow I got a few graveyard shift episodes I need to drop we've been asking a lot of great questions we've been having a lot of cool experiences uh, yeah yeah we keeping the content rolling y'all we keeping the content rolling i love y'all thank y'all for everything man i appreciate y'all and again everybody no bullying let's love in the comments preach love 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 y'all see y'all later i hope y'all ready to clock in tomorrow tomorrow for sure i think it's gonna be a ghost of the roasted stacy got a darn ear infection She was scheduled to be on Ghost of the Roasted tomorrow. <laughs> so she got fired before she even started back. <laughs> but no, nah, yeah, she got an ear infection, y'all. My baby got an ear infection, man. Uh, Christina, thank you. I can shift at Jefferson, Texas Cemetery. Oh, that's interesting. My mother is from Jefferson, Texas. So my mother's side of the family, everybody, like all her and her eight sisters, my grandmama, who video I went to visit, yeah. They're from Jefferson, Texas. Shoot, my granddaddy, I think, might be even buried in Jefferson, to be honest. We might have to do that. We might have to do that. We might have to do that. So, yeah, I'm going to be looking for the call to action video this week, y'all, for people that are interested in potentially being remote shifters. Uh, we're going to have to figure it out. And we're going to let our family pick and choose who they want to see more of. Like, I might put you It's, it's going to be like Showtime at the Apollo. <laughs> it's gonna be showtime at the cemetery <laughs> you might say don't send your video in if you sensitive like me because listen they gonna tell you they gonna tell you in the comment section <laughs> but we might find a couple people that people really like and we'll just bring them in from time to time so yeah be on the lookout for that video y'all we gonna make this channel very interactive and very fun 
All right, y'all. Love y'all, man. Oh, yeah. And we got to get some moderators. I need to Google how that works. I don't know anything about YouTube moderators, but I feel like we need it. It sounds official. All right. Love, love, love. We out, baby.